G'day guys, welcome to a new episode of Bogan's Guide to Wine. I'm Sampy. I'm Gruber. Today, Gruber, you have brought something special to the table. Oh yes. Not drinking wine today. No. Nah. What have you what have you brought for us, mate? A bit of an after dinner appearance. Yes. Oh, okay. We got Bowmall. Bowmall? Where's Bowmall from? Ah, now, I'm glad you asked. The Isle of Eileen is renowned for its whiskies. It has eight uh, distilleries on board, um, all renowned for peat. Ah. Each, you know, it's a bit like... What wine. is peat? What is peat for our novice viewers? Ah, well, you, you, it, it's kind of like a bog. So there are some people, like my brother-in-law, for instance, who just calls this liquid dirt. But I don't believe in that. I like the seaweed floating in it. I like the added iodine, the, the old car tyres that dragged off the beach and burnt and then injected some love and water. So Pete stuff. See, this is this where I, see, I always thought Pete was basically shit. Well, yes, exactly. Oh, okay. Strained through shit. Um, but this. But, but you were saying this. Flavour some shit. <laughs> Flavour some shit. This, but, but, this but, but, variety. But, but, but it's got sort of like seaweed, so it's, it's an obviously uh, ocean based mm. product. Oh, yeah. Salt. And, but where's the poo coming? Oh, I think they burn it or something. I don't know, I'm, I'm not a historian. <laughs> labelling, mate. What are you thinking about the labelling on this one? Well, look, this is a. Um, this is a fine example of the um, the photocopying art. The photocopying art. Yes. What do you mean by that? Well, not that long ago, honestly, Scotch whisky. It was the labels were like something they whipped up the back of the schoolhouse in a gazette. You know, it was like <laughs> this is whisky made in Scotland out of porridge. You know, and it was black and white. They and tore the labels up exactly. And just slapped it on yes. the thing. Precisely. Whereas now, you know, with the you know the intervention of the modern photocopier, we have colour. Um, you know, it's, it's very straightforward. Exactly. It says it's when it was established, who it's by, what it is, bourbon cast, matured, and stilled in Scotland. There's your information, and I just spotted how much the alcohol content is, and I'm sure you really know. So yeah, we'll save that for the next one. <laughs> Okay, it's a uh, it's a really nice colour. It's it, like I say, it's kind of light. It's not too uh, too brownie. It's definitely if it, actually it's it's really it's we talk about when when we get some nice dark um, shardies or something like that. Normally on the show, I, I use the term golden. Mm. This well, is gold. Say, this gold. is liquid gold straight up, isn't it? Absolutely. That's just uh, nectar. Delicious looking. If you got a vat of honey and kind of put boiling water into it, you'd get. I was gonna say, I wouldn't even say water it. down, it just looks like really runny honey. Well, exactly. Great name for a new I mean, this uh, would be. Runny honey bourbon. This would be, I'd give it three Vikings. Three Vikings. Huh? What? what, what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Explain. This is a little known fact. Right there, there is a um, Scottish kind of, you know, ranking mm -hmm. of colour. Um, you know, five Vikings is about the colour of um, the Viking uh, Queen, Gertrude the Redbeard. And uh, for a heavy night on the piss, her urine would be about a five. <laughs> um, down to zero, which is about water. Right. And this would be about a three, I reckon. About a three. <laughs> I'll take your word on that. You did ask me to make it up. <laughs> Okay, okay, we're doing the smell. Now, what I, I know about the wine, what am I meant to be looking for here? Or okay, tell me all about right, it. look, you know, I'll quit with the jokes. Uh, it's Bowmore, it's oh. an oily malt, so you're going to get smoke, you're going to get peat. Um, Bowmore is renowned for being, I don't know, just good touches of honey and complexity. Mm, yeah, I can uh, find the honey there. And the bourbon, I mean, that's just going to add to that um, kind of smokiness and that sweetness. It's probably going to have a sweetness on the palate, I reckon. It smells delicious. And look, you, you, you say you talk about the peat, and I don't know a lot about whiskey. I'm, you know, when I was coming up through the ranks, I was all about you know, scotch and bourbon and whatnot, but I never actually got down to the proper, which you did growing up, expensive sort of stuff, which I'm assuming this is, and we'll come to that later. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, the smell, that 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 peatiness, mm. and I really like that peatiness, and I hope I'm describing it correctly. When well, I exactly, and you know, people either seem to love it or hate it. It, it, it definitely polarizes people. As I said, like my my brother-in-law, doesn't matter how little peat is in it, he'll say, "I'm drinking dirt," but I love it. Yeah, I absolutely I'm a, love it. I'm a fan. And, you know, look, there's a whiskey for every occasion. You know, people that say I don't like whiskey, well, you just haven't found a whiskey you like. You know, you know my, my wife, we got married eight years ago, and God bless her, she said, Fraser, you're a whiskey drinker, I'm going to find a whiskey I like. We drink a lot of whiskey. <laughs> but, you good, know, good task to have, mate. Well, exactly, and she settled on Speyside whiskies. You know, they're, they're, they're subtle, there's, there's definitely honey in there and sweetness and... And I mean, I call it girls' whiskey now, which isn't to d demean it. It just means my wife likes it. But you know, Glen Glenmorangie is her drink. Oh, I love Glenmorangie. It's a fantastic. Drink. And you feel like have an episode with your wife one day? Woo! Yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers, cheers. Ching, ching. Woohoo! Actually, as the Scots would say, um, I was going to say Lachaim, but that's Jewish. <laughs> Slangeva! Well, that's what my dad used to say from ah. Glasgow. He was. Yeah, anyway. We'll play a bit of catch up. That is. Because we're obviously doing it. Oh. We've got no water or anything in this, have we? This is, no, you don't want great. any water with this, man. Doesn't water enhance the flavour? Oh, look, there's lots of different theories about it. Some people say, you know, there are some whiskies, they've got different characteristics. Some whiskies have quite a bit of burn. Um, some people don't like the burn. The whiskey, like with any alcohol, you add a bit of, sorry, the whiskey, the water. You add a little bit of water and it kind of takes that alcohol burn out of it. Um, this, it's teensy, teensy bit of burn. Oh, it's wheat. It's, 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 it's not much, but yeah, I, I can I can find that burn that you're talking about, but it's it's not mm. uh, certainly not overpowering the experience. You, all you got is just these that is waves of flavour coming over your palate, and it's it's so well balanced. That's what I love about this particular whiskey. What am I looking for? Because like, we have uh, Polar on the show quite often. He talks about well, I, this tastes like wine, and to me, this tastes like scotch. The whiskey. <laughs> Are there any sort of things I should be looking for, or people should be looking for when they're looking when they're tasting this stuff? Well, you know, I, I, I guess you want to taste uh, the, the the district, you know, kind of so know, this is characteristics. All, so this so, is all about like the terroir. So, so, yeah, the, so you want to you want to taste that peat. And so, it's, we, so when you're drinking wine, you, you, you sort of search for chocolates or fruits or oh, definitely. This okay. This. So, but this, so is, this, is there anything you, you in want here? to be probably looking? I reckon for bit of vanilla, bit of honey, um, some bourbon characteristics. I mean, I, I'm not big on bourbon, so I mean, you, what would you normally get out of a bourbon? The uh, probably a little bit of spice. There's a bit of spice in there. Definitely spicy. There's uh, when you when one comes to get suggestions, an incredible thing. That vanilla, I can definitely get that nice vanilla ah, cinnamon. Bit of cinnamon. cinnamon. <laughs> Final verdicts, mate. What a out of 10, what are you going to rate this one? Oh, actually no, because you know all about this. Because you you brought this to the table, these guys haven't actually supplied it to us. It's one of those rare instances where mm. this come out of your pocket and yeah. my pocket, thank God, but that's all right. <laughs> um, I'm going to guess this is at least a $50 bottle of uh, whiskey. Uh, look, you'd get a good blend for, okay, right for 50 bucks. Um, I have seen this on the shelf. For 120. Oh, I purchased this bottle for 80. So that oh, will just okay. give you the range. So you got to have that little bit of uh, knowledge and you spot the bargain and yeah, absolutely. And, and you, you know, possible. single malts, you're always going to pay more. Because we did actually talk about this before. You you just stumbled across this bottle mm. by accident because you Ooh. were going to bring it. Mm. You went to Perth and all celebrate. Busted the ass out of it with a bunch of mates last weekend. So I had to go get another one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's much appreciated. So, 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 eighty bucks, but it's normally around that. Yeah, yeah, P and, plus and look, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's it's a great, great whiskey. And uh, you're not going to scale it down like you would a bottle of wine. And well, I'm looking at all the audience members, thinking, oh, I can't wait to have a yeah. taste of this. Fraser's going to take this and run away. No, 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 I'm happy to share. Happy to Thanks, share. Fraser. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> so uh, out of ten, what are you going to rate this as a? Uh, well, because I'm learning, mate. You got to teach oh, me. Okay, all right. Well, look, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go into it too much. I'm going to give it an eight, which might sound harsh, uh, but I've tasted a lot of whiskey, and this is an eight. But it's 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 worth it at 80 it'd be worth it at 90 i'd probably struggle at 100 yeah. certainly wouldn't pay 120. yeah and no, i'll be struggling but i reckon yeah around that 80 dollar mark i reckon that's worth every oh, single great uh, cent it's, great that's an absolute steal so um yeah these guys didn't uh, supply it, so bugger them. They're not getting a the replace <laughs> print. You go to the bottle shop and you try hunting this sucker Mr. down. Mr. Bullmore, I love you. Please send me a kiss. <laughs> Bloody. Till next time, guys, this has been Bogan's Guide to Whiskey. Woohoo! Get it in ya! Woohoo! Now you can rock your very own Bogan's Guide to Wine t shirt. Visit bogansguidetowine.com.au. Get it on ya. Um, the Americans, they single distill theirs. The Scots, they double distill their whiskies. The Irish triple distill, distill their whiskies. Now, why do you reckon the Irish would triple distill their whiskies? Uh, to make it more alcoholic. <laughs> to be sure, to, to be, be sure, sure, to be sure. sure. <laughs> That's an oldie, but I didn't.